Hello, my name is Michael Watson. I'm a composer and music producer, and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual. And today I'm talking about crossfades. So if you've got your Ableton Live project open and you go to the right, make sure this little M is highlighted. This is your mixer button. And also make sure this little X is highlighted. This X over here shows you your crossfades. So when your X here is highlighted, you should see on your master track these two lines with this little triangle thingy, and all your other tracks should have an A and a B. So crossfading is cool if you want to crossfade between two tracks or two clips, but this is more traditionally used by DJs if they're fading from one track to another track, and it is really simple to use. So I've got these two tracks queued up over here, and uh, if I play both of them, by changing the switch, I can simply crossfade between the two of them. However, it's not as simple as just dragging this thing along. You need to cue them with these A and Bs. So I've got this four audio queued up at A, and I've got five audio queued up at B. And basically what A and B mean is that if A is highlighted, then if this crossfader is at its most left position, then you're going to be hearing 100% of the signal A. If this crossfader is at the rightmost position, you'll be hearing 100% of signal B. And it's easy to remember this because A is on the left side and B is on the right side. If your crossfader is in the middle, then you're going to be hearing half of both. What this crossfader does is it changes the volume of the respective tracks depending on where it is. So it would change the volume of anything the signal is being routed to. You can also key map this crossfader. So if you've got a MIDI keyboard or you're using your computer keyboard, you can map it in a way that one key makes this fader jump to the left, one key makes it jump to the right, and one to the middle. That's if you have static keys. You can also map it to, say, a mod wheel so that you can use the mod wheel to move this crossfader freely. So if you have an Ableton Push 2, then you should be able to have all those options at your disposal, or just a MIDI keyboard with a mod wheel on the side. <laughs> Then finally, you can choose your crossfader graphs. So if you go to this little crossfader section in your mastered fader and you right click, you can see here it says dipped, intermediate, constant power, slow fade, and so forth. Also show automation in lane. These various options correspond to various graphs that change the crossfading behavior. So here you can see the graphs and you can see the crossfader response on the right and the A and B power level on the left. So you can also automate this crossfade position, and you can also record it in the arrangement view. So I'm going to hit record, play these, they're already playing, and uh, change this crossfader position. Now I'm going to go into the arrangement view, look at what I just recorded. And here you can see my crossfader position. So to get there, you need to go to your actual master track. So not the track that's holding these audio tracks, not these ones, but your master track, this one over here. Make sure the mixer is chosen from the master tracks device chooser and crossfade is selected from the control chooser. You can then edit it to your desire. Another thing you can do on your actual audio tracks, if you've got mixer in the top one over here, then the bottom here you'll see X fade assign and you can change whether it's assigned to your A track or B track. It's only got two options. That's why it snaps like that. And that's it for crossfading. I hope that you've learned a lot. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them below. I'd love to help you and um, have fun learning.